Let's tell a little story, because that's what I do. I just managed to sit down at the computer and start on my email today when I heard a very distinctive type of silence in the hallway outside my office. My boy is here, is he? No? We good? This is, about, this is about my boy. Our stairway is noisy, you see. If an adult goes up or down it, each step groans and moans. It's an old house. But somebody lighter, somebody child size, can go up the stairs with barely any noise at all, except for a tiny creak here or there, and the tiny tamping of a tiny foot. I looked up and I saw Oot standing outside the doorway. Oot's what I call him, no, about four years old. He was positioned so that I couldn't see him at all unless I leaned way over in my chair. He knocked on the door frame very softly. His feet had made more noise. This is something we've worked very hard to instill in him. I have an old Model M keyboard. It's one of the clicky keyboards. That's right. <laughs> and you can hear it easily from anywhere in the house. The rule is, if I'm typing in my office, he isn't supposed to come in and bother me. Hence the sneaking up the stairs. Hence the quietest of quiet knocks. Hello, my sweet child. I reach out for him, and he comes over to give me a hug. He kisses my arm. Dad, I was wondering if... He looks around the room. I was wondering... His eyes continue to dart around almost desperately. At this age, I can still read him like a book. He isn't really wondering anything. He doesn't really want anything in particular. He just wants to spend time with me. And my time is spent in short supply lately. I'm scrambling with my team to get ready for the launch of our yearly fundraiser. I've been spending hour after hour emailing people, looking for authors and publishers and geek celebrities who would like to help out with world builders. Looking for corporate sponsors, looking for game designers and musicians, and members of the geek glitterati that might be willing to help us spread the word. And if that weren't enough, we launched a big sale in our online store that's running through the weekend, so I've been trying to promote that as well. I am a fixer by nature. I want to make things better. It's not just something I like to do, it's closer to being a compulsion with me. Generally speaking, I don't mind this particular twist in my psyche, but it leads to some problems, because if you are clever enough, you can see how almost anything needs fixing. And, not to put too fine a point on it, but I'm fairly clever. I also subscribe to Terry Pratchett's philosophy of personal isn't the same as important. The last problem is that I am good at math. Again, both of these are good things. The problem is when you put all three of them together. If you're good at math and you like to fix things and personal isn't the same as important, you end up coming to some very hard conclusions. One of these conclusions is that if I spend an hour sending out a few more emails, I can probably get a few more people to blog about our sale and the, and the Tinker's Packs, and this would easily bring in another $1,000 that we'll be able to donate to Heifer International. $1,000 means 10 goats go to needy families. That means those families have more food, more money, healthier children, better lifestyle, and not just for a month or two, that's forever. And the effect snowballs because goats have babies. So what's more important, improving the lives of 10 families forever or me spending an hour with my son? The cruel mathematics of this situation are pretty clear cut. I want to spend time with my boy, but making the world a better place is more important. So nine times out of ten, I make that choice, and so my boy is constantly desperate to spend time with me, and I'm lonely for him. Dad, he says, Dad, I was... He looks at the rug, the wall, my robe. Dad, I was wondering... Would you like to play the B game? I ask. Oh, yeah, he says jumping just a little bit into his excitement. I would love to. So we go into the other room and we play A, B, C match game. In some ways, it's a perfect game for his age. There's letter identification, reading, spelling. I believe the term is edutainment. And it's a pretty game, too. It comes in a tidy little package shaped like a bee. But in terms of game design, it is a fucking hot mess. <laughs> the balance of the game is way off. 
And they should have brought in someone with some serious math to, to design what letters go on which dice and how many of each. Because right now there's this point in the game when you roll and nothing happens, and you roll and nothing happens, and again and again. And I'm aware that this is not a Agricola, right? We are, not, we are not playing Go. The point is to have fun with my child, but still, it is bad game design. And broken things bother me. Broken things walk for fixing, because I am at the very heart of me a fixer. Plus, it makes the game drag. It's not monopoly bad, but it's pretty bad. A children's game should be 10, 15 minutes. It should not take half an hour. Exacerbating this is the fact that it loves to shake the dice a lot. And those of you that play a lot of games know how irritating a fucking dramatic dice roller can be. <laughs> so I'm trying to relax and enjoy myself, but it's hard. And the game is flawed, and Root is distractible, and the game has just dragged its way past 40 minutes. And here's the thing. There are kids starving to death in the other room. That's what it feels like to me. A couple of days ago on the blog, I wrote about how I had a moment of happiness during Thanksgiving, because not only did I give myself the night off work, I gave myself the night off thinking about work. This is quite possibly the central problem in my life right now. You see, if I work on my book, I feel guilty because I'm neglecting my son. If I play with my boy, I feel guilty for I'm neglecting my work. And if, God forbid, I take some time by myself to play a game or read a book or group off on Facebook, I feel twice as guilty. There are always so many things that I should be doing, and I just can't do all of them, let alone all at once. So I'm laying on the floor, playing the B game with my son, trying desperately not to be irritated and impatient. I can't get bitchy at my little boy for wanting to roll his dice in a certain way. It is just unacceptable. Then he leans, he goes on to all fours, and he starts to crawl away from his dice, and I know I shouldn't snap at him for getting distracted. He is four. That is okay. But even so, I need to finish this fucking game, because there are kids starting in the other room. And so I open my mouth, and despite my best intentions, I know I am going to say something that will end up sounding like irritated, disappointed dad. But he's not crawling away. He was just coming closer to give me a kiss on my leg. And then he goes back to his desk. It's the sweetest thing. We play for another minute or so. I shake and roll. He shakes and shakes and shakes and shakes and shakes and rolls. And then he says, you should always remember this time. And I look up at him, what? You should always remember this time, he says, right now. It was something so uncanny that I never would have dared to make it up. If I had ever read something like this in a piece of fiction, I would have rolled my eyes at it and instantly thought less of the author. <laughs> I didn't want to press him any further on what he meant. Honestly, I was scared to. <laughs> if something happened to him, it would destroy me. There would be nothing left of me to put back together. I disagreed with him instead, because you should agree with someone when they make a very good point. <laughs> You're right, I said. I should remember this time. And that's why I decided to write this down, you realize. So I would always remember this time. We went back to playing the game. I managed to relax a little bit, but not as much as I'd like to. Because as much as I want to relax and spend the whole Saturday afternoon with my boy, the truth is there are kids starting in the other room, and I don't know how to stop caring about that. Without good resolution, as always, yeah. That is my time, folks. Um, I am to inform you that we're going to have a little 10 minute intermission. Um, so smoke them if you got them, or use the restroom, whichever you prefer. And then there will be the fabulous Paul and Storm. Thank you so much.